For linguistically diverse students, an instructional strategy you will use almost every day is using reading and writing practices to enhance comprehension for your students. There are many, many activities that you can do before, during, and after a lesson to use reading and writing to extend their learning. A few examples is using reading a story before you ask the child to write. That way you'll introduce the language and vocabulary and maybe even the story elements that they will need to do their writing activity. A second strategy within reading and writing practices is the, is the reverse of that where you use writing to prepare you for reading. And this is where you might have them do brainstorms on sticky notes or brainstorms with pictures to prepare them for whatever you're going to read. And you may do this as a predicting activity, but you also may just do this to generate vocabulary um, to get them ready for what they're going to hear you read. A third way you can use reading and writing practices is by using graphic organizers such as webbing and mapping. You can do this before, during, and after reading, and you can do this individually or in small groups. And this will allow them to make connections, compare, contrast, or just do some predicting in a graphic way. A fourth way that you can use reading and writing practices to enhance a linguistically diverse child's comprehension is to use summaries. By writing a summary before or after you've read something to them or taught them something, you can help have them learn um, or put together their thoughts on the content that you're teaching. So sometimes before we read a book, we might either read them a summary of the book or have them um, brainstorm a summary of what they think the book will be about to get them ready. Uh, in to flip that would be after you read them something to see if they can orally or in written form give you a summary to confirm that they understand what you gave them. The fifth strategy within this category is called using authentic messages. This is often used in primary classrooms uh, because it not only is a good strategy for our English language learners, but it's also a good strategy for our new writers and readers. Using authentic messages is where we are giving the boys and girls the ability, just like in the language experience approach, to talk about and share information uh, that is important to them. Um, and then we'll use what they tell us to teach our lesson, whether it be in phonics or conventions or um, grammar. Uh, an example of this would be on a Monday morning in a classroom. You may ask the boys and girls, what did you do this weekend? And you would have them generate information that you would write down on chart paper or on a wipe off board or even type into a computer that they could read. Now, later on in the day, you can take that text and you can teach them something else using it. So maybe you're going to teach them about punctuation. You might say, um, today we're going to learn about periods or question marks or exclamation marks. Who can find that punctuation in our message that we wrote this morning? You might have them go on a search for capital letters or for verbs or for nouns or for the letter D or the letter Z. An authentic message is where you're using their words and their interests and their language to teach a skill and it becomes more meaningful for them. Our last strategy under the reading and writing practice category is the use of dialogue journals. Dialogue journals are where we are having a conversation in written form and it's usually between two parties. This is really meaningful for our ELL students because it gives them the chance to write things down and it gives them the chance to have a personal conversation with their teacher when sometimes that's not an available thing in your classroom. Um, an example of a dialogue journal with a student would be um, at the end of every day, 
uh, the, the student would write something to you and then they would give you your journal and you would answer that uh, over the course of the evening and in the morning when they return to school they can read what you wrote to them and hopefully you'll be answering some questions and, and extending your conversation and then they will be taking that and replying to you. It's almost like when we have um, pen pals. I've used it with my own daughters. Uh, our lives are very hectic and about two years ago I gave them each a dialogue journal and I said at the at any point in the day, if there's something you want to tell me and we don't get to it, write it down in your journal, put it on my pillow at bedtime, and then I'll answer it, and you can read it in the morning, and then, you know, I'll ask you things or tell you things that I didn't get to share. And it was a really neat way to dialogue back and forth and have real meaningful conversations and extend on things that they say when we might not have time in our everyday lives. And this is true in the classroom as well. Classrooms are busy, and this gives your uh, linguistically diverse student a safe place to record things that they need to have conversations with you about. You can see there are very many ways to use reading and writing practices in your classroom to instruct your linguistically diverse students. These were six practices that you may use for your lesson demonstration.